Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Technical Recap here. So, in this episode, I'm going to be covering Penalty and so far. So, first up, let's replay what happened with Penalty this week. And as you can see, uh, you know, we had a couple of drops here on uh, Tuesday, and then we actually exploded up um, by the end of the week. So, let's put out the technicals right now. You can see that uh, Penalty is right now having a double top pattern. So, what this means is that it usually means that we might start to curl down here. Um, now, there are a couple of things here. The RSI right now is overbought on the 1-hour chart. And you, as you can see on the 4-hour chart, it says the same thing as well. So, you know, if we start to curl down next week, basically if the market doesn't recover next week, um, then we might start to see um, Palantir hit $16, where there will be a sort of resistance turn support here. So that would be good if um, Palantir can hold that. Or if that breaks, then we are likely going to head to around 1560 to 1570 here, um, which is this uh, variable support here that I drew. And the other thing is that if the market recovers, then we are probably going to see a uh, breakout next week here. So let's zoom out. Let's go to the 4-hour chart. You can see that the RSI right now is overbought and the MACD um, looks like it is possible to curl down. Um, if, if it doesn't curl down, then it's going to accelerate, right? So let's move on to the one week chart. And as you can see here, on the one week chart, Pantheon actually looks very positive. Uh, the RSI right now is just about to break out towards the upside. MACD has been decaying towards the upside as well. So once again, Pantheon doing a very, very good job. Now, this did not come very easily. I wrote on my Twitter that it basically took three major contracts the army contract, the NIH contract, and the NHS contract, which is currently now unconfirmed. But it also took AIP and it took an, an AI arms race to get penalty to $16. So I'm hoping the market sentiment has finally changed with penalty and this uptrend can continue, right? So next up, let's go to SoFi stock. Let's actually replay it here. Um, so it looks like we had a, a lot of trouble with SoFi this week. It curled down around Tuesday and Wednesday. I think this was actually because um, the Federal Reserve released some data on um, um, something there. Let's uh, give it a look at the Fibonacci here. You can see that the Fibonacci right now, um, there is a possible retracement of 784 and 771. Those are in um, US dollars. And those are the uh, 0 0.236 uh, and 0 0.382 Fibonacci level. And as you can see, RSI right now is about to curl, uh, sorry, is overbought right now. So very similar to what happened in Pound here. You can see the same thing with uh, the four hour chart, although it's not overbought. It is, you know, stabilizing here. So we are about to um, either head up or head down based on what the market is going to do. And as you can see, so far right now is in an uptrend. So I wouldn't necessarily be too worried about this. I'm going to talk about why SoFi is a marketing machine. Now, I heard this on SoFi Weekly, so I have to give credit to them. But there is a reason why they don't sell SoFi, and that is because I think they will grow, right? So um, it's I, I think it's going to go up and to the right, uh, as TJ puts it. So let's go to the one-week chart. And uh, as you can see right now, the uh, RSI doesn't look as good as um, Palantir, so we haven't reached a point where I think is possibly going to break out, but um, we are heading upward. So that is a good sign. So the stock price isn't necessarily being sold off too hard, right? Um, but if uh, Biden doesn't allow the uh, student loans, then it's possible so far it might start to curl down once again, which would be very unfortunate. But let's talk about SoFi being a marketing machine. So SoFi basically owns um, SoFi Stadium. So you um, heard about SoFi Stadium and Taylor Swift. And right now they are having the uh, NFL thing, which is actually pretty interesting because remember Anthony Noto worked in the NFL. He's pivoting his old job with the NFL back into SoFi. And that is very interesting because you don't necessarily see that a lot. You have to have a CEO who works in the NFL for that to happen. And that is not very common. And they are also going to do wrestling and they are going to do um, soccer as well. And even the Olympics, that is actually insane. So what, is, what this is going to do is that it's going to drive more eyes into SoFi. And, you know, remember what happened with FTX. Now, I, I don't want to make the comparison here because FTX was uh, ended up being a scam here. But SoFi is not a scam. SoFi is a actual real public company. And when that happens, um, you know, you can scrutinize their financials as well, unlike FTX. And, uh, you know, let's look at the FTX Center in the past. Um, looks like they removed the name. It is now Kaseya Center. Now, remember FTX made an insane growth. Um, that was because they had a stadium, right? Now, I was. It's not necessarily that 
the stadium caused them to grow but i think it definitely helped here so i want to look at the trends for sofi and as you can see um it only spikes up when there is a event with sofi so you know taylor swift and all that um but as of now it is growing very slowly i don't think people search up stadiums like they do dot coms so you know that's a little bit different um so with that being said hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always guys um stay safe over there and like and subscribe